Man, I got the shits. If I take off running, I'm just telling you right now, it's not because I hurt myself. Um, I got a lot of crap I need to try to get done. Um, I took the deck off and I did a video asking you guys for help. So I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll link to that video up here. And um, a lot of good comments are coming in, so I really appreciate you guys. Uh, and I think what I'm going to end up having to do is just kind of jerry-rig something. But I want to know the mechanism. So you guys are being a really a great help. And I'm going to keep reading all your comments and I'm going to make a decision as to what I'm going to do. Either make something or buy something. Uh, but I got the deck off and I flipped it upside down so I can get to the 916th head right here to take the blades off. Now one thing I was going to do, I was thinking of doing, is I wanted to possibly do a cross blade video with this mower, uh, but it's got the star pattern. And so I don't want to have a star pattern on one, you know, like installed properly like that, and then have this one sitting here not properly secured. Uh, because there's the way that the blades are like this, you won't be able to properly secure them. Now, you can get jiggy with it if you want. Get jiggy with it. And weld it, put it on, put it in place, you know, tighten the bolt a little bit, just like that. And then put a little weld right here and here, a small weld here and here, and just put a little stitch and do a cross blade type situation just like the Honda uh, HRX 217 21 inch self propelled push mower, oxymoronic, but you know what I mean, push mower style. Um, I was thinking about doing that, but I don't wanna get into all that. And these are awfully heavy, and this is awfully old. So I don't, I don't wanna do all that. But uh, it was a thought that you guys might ask me, hey Dan, can you cross blade? The answer is only if, the only way to do it safely which might not really be safe, but the only way to do it safely would be to actually bolt it together and then put like half inch stitch welds on the blades to each other, which I have a welder, I mean I could do that, but there's no sense in doing that. And then once you do that, it's a done deal. Um, so I don't, I don't wanna do that. This deck has had a patch put in, so you know, it is an old mower. Um, I got a video I'll link up here that explains how I got this mower and different mower styles and you know, uh, I call it fat, happy, and dumb, you know, I just, and I don't mean dumb in an insulting way, but dumb as in, you know, like, you're just riding along, man, you don't know any different, you don't know any better, you're just happy with what you got, and you don't care, you're just good to go, you got a koozie, and you got your earphones on, maybe a straw hat, and you're just out there in the back 40 just mowing away, that's, that's all that I mean by that, nobody has taken offense, but just in case, you know, there's a lot of snowflakes and pansies out there. Um, there's a lawnmower channel, damn it. Over here, we scratch ourselves and spit. Hey, somebody clean that up. I'm just gonna put a, a edge on me, these blades real fast. Kind of clean them up a little bit. It is wet. Um, I took it out into the yard, used my pressure washer and pressure washed it. Let me put a, um, let me put an edge on these real quick. Put them back on. We're just, it's just a 9 16 head. And I'm just using my Chicago Electric Harbor Freight Special Electric Impact Wrench. And I've been, I've been doing it for years and years and years, just bloop, 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 and then bloop, 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 good and tight. That's it. Don't lean on it too hard. Uh, just good and tight. Does have the, uh, it does have the pattern, the star pattern. So as long as you have it good and tight, the blades aren't going to slip, you'll be good to go. All right, let me... The main purpose for taking the deck off is I need to change out the drive belt, the actual transmission drive belt that goes from the engine all the way to the back and this is kind of in the way. So that's why I got the mower up like that. So I'm gonna get underneath there and change the drive belt. This isn't really a how-to video on this mower but I'm just making this a little bit of a part of the uh, Side Hustle Side hustle Sunday video. Um, I wanted to just make sure this, this mower is serviced and put away for the weekend and put away and ready to be used on the next property that I may need it on, ready to rock. And, I, and now that I have that, and you guys are sending me information, I'm gonna make a decision on what to do and maybe order parts or fabricate something. Uh, but yeah, we got two yards to cut and uh, bushes to mow or uh, to trim. And we'll uh, go ahead and do it. It's on new mulch, so we need to do it in a way that we don't destroy their mulch. And um, I'm gonna just get this thing ready to go and then we'll go to work. Pro tip, pro tip, 
All right, when you have a new belt and you have an old belt, and sometimes you go and you line them up, right? And you're like, man, I don't know. It doesn't look like the new belt's much smaller than the old stretched out belt. And you're like, man, I don't think it's right. It's not really making much of a difference. What you failed to realize is belts don't just stretch, but they wear. And when they wear, that also makes them loose. So right here, you have your new belt and you have your thickness from the flat spot to the V belt, the V. You have this, and we'll exaggerate. We'll say this is one inch. So this takes up a lot of space in your pulleys, which makes tension. Then you have an older belt that might be the same length, but it's not one inch. It's only, say, half inch. So that takes up a lot less space in the pulleys. So that makes the belt loose. So a loose belt doesn't necessarily mean that it's just worn, slap out, stretched. It could also just be smaller, thinner. And so that's not taking up space underneath. And if you're not taking up space, then that's loose space. So a thick belt takes up space that makes it tighter. And a old belt, thin belt, leaves space that makes it looser. So don't get too bent around the axle going like this and going, oh, I don't know, I don't know. As long as it's really, 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 really close and brand new, then look at your differences in thickness and that little bit throughout an entire machine makes a lot of it. Cool? All right, go scratch and spit. I'm gonna put this under. All right, as you can see, we got the mower back together over there and I got a little bunch of cord, I drilled a little hole and I got a bunch of cord to hold the hood down because one of you guys gave me an awesome tip. You said, hey Dan, make sure if you're gonna drive that thing in your truck or trailer, you have a bunch of cord to hold the hood down or it'll flow, it'll blow right off because there's no lock. Uh, so the bungee cord actually goes from the hood down to the um, side chute. So I don't have to hold the side chute up. Uh, so that that serves two purposes. So when I load it up in my truck, I have the side chute up anyways, and I want to hold the hood down while I'm driving. So just leave it, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so yeah, there we go. But anyways, um, as part of your side hustle business, you may or you may not offer pesticide application to your customers. I'll be honest and tell you that you need to know your local laws in your state, your county, your region, your parish, your country, whatever, uh, because they vary. Applicator license and all that sort of stuff is required. So if you don't have an applicator's license, you're, you're on your own if something happens or you get caught or whatever. So, with that said, know what you're doing, okay? Me, I personally don't charge my customers to put down any ant killer if I find ant piles or anything like that. I don't charge them. I do it because they bother me and I don't sell the service to my customers. But let's just say you tell a customer, hey look, I'm going to take care of your yard. It's $40 a cut. I'll be here every two weeks. and every once in a while, you know, if I find an ant pile, I'll treat it. Now, that's not to say that you don't grab a bag like this for, I think it was like a nine or 10 bucks at Walmart, and you can find, like this is Eliminator, but you can find Bug Be Gone, Ortho, Spectracide, and it's all the same shit, okay? You look at the active ingredients, you can't pronounce the active ingredients from one brand to the other, so it must work, all right? That's my reasoning. Um, it's all gonna freaking work. And so just get yourself a little bag of this stuff, keep it in your truck or your trailer, and spot treat as needed, or just do blanket coverage. Um, usually these things will tell you where to set your spreader for the type of spreader you have. It's like three or three and a quarter. They all say about the same. They all say they're about 10 to 13,000 square feet. I think this one says 16,000 square feet. Um, so, you know, you water it in, and when it's dry, then your kids and dogs can go and play on it. Uh, until then, keep your kids and dogs off of it, because then you have these granules sticking to their shoes, their feet, their flip-flops, their dog paws, and then they're tracking it in the house, and you don't want that shit. And then they're licking it off their paws, right? So, I mean, this stuff is poison. And in large quantities, it can make you, your kids, and your animals sick. Um, in any quantity, perhaps, I don't know. 
So be really careful, look into applicator licenses, and research the product if you're concerned about it. Uh, I'm not here to say one's better than the other. Don't be afraid to tell your customers, hey, I keep stuff with me. I'll treat your ant piles if they come up as part of my lawn service. Perfectly fine to do. But don't be charging now quarterly pesticide application and putting granular liquid down and not having an applicator's license. That will get your ass caught up, all right? But treat wasp nests, you know, treat ant piles and stuff like that as you see fit. Perfectly fine to do so. You're protecting yourself, your work area, you're protecting the kids. I do a blanket treatment a couple times a year with the spreader and I'm usually pretty good. That's how I do it and I don't necessarily charge the customer, right? In my mind, I might have. Maybe I was going to be a $40 yard and I, I know that I'm going to drop some chemicals once in a while. Maybe I'll tell them $50. But it's not in writing and it's not implied. You know what you're doing. It's your side hustle business. All right? So it's something to keep in mind. But know your local laws and do it right. Or for God's sakes, don't put it in freaking writing. Cool? Cool. I'm going to go put this down in my yard, in Carolyn's yard, because we got ants and then we're going to go mow. Reading the directions, this stuff here says Scott Speed Green Rotary, uh, two pounds per thousand square feet, so around three, put it to around three. Um, if you got like a vegetable garden, stuff like that, this gives you all that information, um, spreader settings and all that crap. Just I put it down, I eyeball it. I like to put the stuff down kind of thick. This says 16,000 square feet. Yeah, if we're gonna use this whole thing, no problem. This whole bag would be used up. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this squirt away, and then we're gonna get on to cutting. Bro, I'm so pro. It's not fake. I didn't even bring a rake. We're gonna trim this bush, and what you do is you throw your old lady a 20, and you tell her, Anything you want in the clearance aisles at Walmart, right? So she gets in her car, she hauls ass, whatever. You really want to make it nice, set her up to riding lawnmower, take the deck off and let her be like a farm girl. 20 bucks, all you want on the clearance racks, go. As soon as she leaves, go raid her linen closet. Don't let her know. Get some old sheets and lay them out. Break not required. Damn, these are good sheets. Oh well. King size is better. And do the back. A lot of people use tarps. I've used tarps, but bed sheets are easier to mess with. And they take up less space. So you trim as you need, where you need, and then move the tarp to the other area. Be right back, let me get my tool. This is the Echo HC152. Uh, nice little hedge trimmer, double-sided. I think it's one inch cut. Uh, I, think it, I think it's one inch here. I think they say up to three quarter inch um, branches. But I think it's actually like an inch right here, but I don't know, whatever. Um, you can use it like a saw and cut through some big shit. Uh, pretty cheap, Home Depot had this thing for probably four or five years now HC 152 um, and that's pretty tall so you could pick yourself up one of these step ladders light and easy to keep in a trailer at all times and you can go to work that in your way
car. Take a good look at what you're doing before you move the sheets to the other side. Make sure it's what you want. That's the part that screws everybody up, is they don't have the patience and they rush. Take an extra minute, clean up your clippings, get everything situated right, and then when you pull out your blankets or your sheets, whatever, you could pull them out, flip them on the grass, and bag them up with the mower with minimal um, excess falling onto your mulch. So how's that look? It's like we weren't even there. And there's the mess right here. There it is. It's a hell of a lot easier than trying to pick that shit out or trying to rake it, right? A little bit more time maybe, you want to haul ass and get it done, but look at the cleanup now. There's no cleanup.
stand back and let's take a look. Oh, hell, doggy. That looks good. Now our final step. Let's see. What you guys might not realize is they didn't pay me to put that mulch down to where they come home and, they, and it's all jacked up and they're like, well crap, we wasted our money. They put this mulch down. They paid for it. Husband and wife did this. So then they know the work they put into it. So it's even worse if you screw this up on them. Nice and easy, don't let it slide out on you. No loss of mulch. I'll show you one more trick. Gangsta. Gangsta rap is back. So now I'll just put that in the can and we'll be done. But you can bag that up with your mower, rake it up, whatever you want, whatever, whatever. I actually think I got this step stool at Home Depot. I think that's where I got this from. And uh, I used to stand it up in my enclosed trailer. It's a Werner. Maybe 50 bucks, 40 bucks, aluminum, lightweight, strong, wide platform. And you see what it just did. All right, so we're gonna mow first and then we'd eat an edge with just a string trimmer because we're gone basic today, real basic, all right? That's, I'm trying to finish this season off real basic. Um, so, real basic with a $600 mower, sorry. Um, I've earned this mower. I wanna show you guys something real quick. Do you have any idea how important it is for your handle to fit under a mailbox? This is the difference between having to move your machine around as you approach a mailbox and not. If so if you're lucky and you're like me and you don't, you, you like your hands kind of a little bit lower and it's self-propelled. See, if it's not self-propelled, my hands gotta be higher so I can get in and push. But when it's self-propelled, I can hold it down a little bit lower and the handle goes under tree branches, mailboxes, makes it a lot straight mower, straight, straight mowing.
Right over here, we have a crap load of tree roots. See all these tree root knuckles? So you guys are constantly asking me about it. The neighbor, before he moved away, he used to chainsaw his flat. He hated them. <laughs> so I just mow around them and then I weed eat it. It actually looks pretty good once it's weed eated. KM90R split shaft, steel, straight shaft, weed eater, factory head, 80 thousandths Oregon Pro weed eater line. Link is in the featured items. Badass line.
right, here we go. Over here with dummy edging. I'm going to show you dummy edging. Dummy edging is when a customer has an edge in their yard and forever, and you, they just ask you to clean it up. They don't care if you find the crack or not. Just clean it up. So watch this. We're going to dummy edge, and then we're going to go back over it right. Imagine this being real bad, real bad. I just edged it enough, it's a little crooked, but see how I edged it enough to make it look edged, but I didn't really go into the crack. So if you got a really bad yard, you could dummy edge like that to get you by.
Alright, I'm gonna go weed eat up here, blow off and show you the front. So, as you look at the yard, you don't see any of the mulch in the grass. You didn't hear the mulch getting destroyed by the mower blade from raking it out or weed eating it out um, or blowing it out. The bush is nice. The mulch is as good as it was. The grass looks great. Customer is happy. I mean, we can't complain, right? I am a wreck. Anyways, here's the backyard. Remember when we cleared that out a while ago? Still looks really good. Anyways, and this backyard's, woo wee. This backyard is something. I gotta go towel off and uh, go pick up some Chinese food. It's a bad storm on us. It's gonna be here any minute. Look at that crap over there. Look at it way down. Look at the black sky. <laughs> All right, how's the wind doing? That's a good wind check right now. All right, so that's probably gonna be it for today's vlog. Um, Anyways, we've got some pro tips with the blanket or whatever, the bed sheets. Uh, dummy edging with the weed eater. Handle low to go underneath tree limbs and mailboxes. Uh, little things like that, you know, will help. So, anyways, I'm beat, man. I've been hauling ass because of this storm. I'll see you guys on the next one. Tell me about the whistle. The whistle.